I'm on the Isle de Vasquez. Uh, that's Puerto Rico over there. I don't believe you can, well, you can probably see a little bit. Uh, amazing boats. This is the ferry. Well, that's not the ferry, but that's where it would come in. Staying in this big eight bedroom mansion. Everyone's sleeping right now. We just had a wedding last night. Uh, here is the island where I'm staying at, Isla de Vasquez. Hope you can see that. And there's the island of Puerto Rico. If I didn't realize Puerto Rico, you don't need a passport. They speak English. Uh, the dollar is used. My phone works. So we can invest abroad. Um, now, whether investing abroad means to you investing while you're on vacation or you're in Europe and you want to invest in the States in mobile homes or you're from part of the country and you want to invest in a different part of the country or you have family in a different part of the country and you want to invest there. Hey, can you say hi? Oh, you're so pretty. I'm making a video right now about investing in other states. You want to help me? You want to help me a little bit? Okay. So whether that means investing abroad in a different country or investing um, just right down the street, uh, we're going to go ahead and show you just what can be done by you, what should be outsourced. Thanks for watching along. I'm going to try to talk as clear as possible in this video, but this video is going to be very robust. And by the end, I want you to understand what's possible, what's not possible with regards to investing in a different area than your own. What can be outsourced, what should be outsourced, and what should not be outsourced? You know, what are the activities that are required in this field of mobile home investing? And then can it be done without you or from you from afar or by the phone? So we're going to talk about all that, again, at kind of a, a macro level at first, and then zoom right down. Uh, into a micro level. So this is a very accurate depiction of the United States and some countries. So uh, what this video is talking about, you may have already been thinking, you know, I'm in Europe, I want to invest in the States, or I'm in Asia, I want to invest in mobile homes in the States. Um, I live in New York City, let's say, and I'm going to say 90 minutes around you is your investing turf, your investing radius. Now, you may agree or disagree with me, uh, maybe it's two hours for you, you know, you're comfortably driving two hours, that's fine. Or maybe just 90 minutes, or uh, 60 minutes, or 30 minutes. Whatever your investing radius is, I'm going to say it's 90 minutes around you, kind of about 60 miles, give or take, uh, around you to be a comfortable investing radius. But let's say you don't want to stay there. You, want, you have family in Virginia, so you want to invest in Virginia. Or you take periodic flights down there, so you want to invest there. Or you want to go to Florida, or you're, you have family in Florida, or you... Again, California or Texas, you know, so what's possible, but what's, what's not? So on a very macro level, there's some things to consider with mobile home investing. Uh, the money that goes into a deal. Now, in my opinion, when you first get started, you should have at least over $2,000. Can you get started with less? Uh, absolutely. Your due diligence will be different because your exit strategies will have to make sense because you don't have a lot of money. So you're going to have to continue to raise capital while you're investing in mobile homes and then invest everything you make back into your business so you can really start ramping up as quickly as possible. So we're going to talk about money and I make a separate video uh, about that uh, so you can click that if you want to know kind of if you have enough money and what all goes into that. But capital is something to consider. The time. Now this does take time. Does it have to be yours? Not necessarily for every piece. Uh, I'm going to say over 25 hours per week. Uh, investing to make you know some serious gains. Can you invest five hours a week? Of course, but you're going to be only getting five hours a very very part-time you know job of results. So I say 25 hours or more a week to get started. After that, it can go down because you can start to outsource. We'll talk about that a little bit more. And then knowledge. Does this have to? Uh, now does this have to all be you? Can you have a partner? Absolutely. So knowledge you're going to say or you know some to you know, lots of knowledge depending on who's taking all of these roles, if you have to follow up with people, if you have to, to watch over people, or are you just trusting them? You're like, hey, here's my money, you know, make me some money. So we're going to talk about all that in a little bit. And then FaceTime is you know, another thing I, I would say to consider. So FaceTime actually with the seller to sign papers, to get things uh, signed, to put notices on doors, to go buy properties, to you know, touch things yourself and smell things and look at things and shake people's hands and meet sellers and buyers face to face. Now, is that needed? We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Uh, right now, I want to kind of go to two things. I want to go to two videos uh, of other investors who actually, one was in a completely different country all around the world, invested in mobile homes. One was just uh, in a different state here uh, in the U.S. and invested in mobile homes. And I want to talk to you, or them, and I want you to hear 
uh, what was possible for them, what they could do, what they didn't do. And then there's a theme running through these. So we're going to come back after these quick videos and talk about all the different steps kind of from A to Z. There's only so many steps that go into mobile home investing, kind of the, the big steps. There's a lot of due diligence and nuances within those steps. We're going to talk about the big steps, what's possible, what's not possible to outsource, what's a detriment to your business, what can help. So uh, we're going to go to those two videos right now with Val and Gina and then Carlos, and we're going to talk about their deals, and then we're going to come back here and get into depth uh, about what's going on in your business and what's possible and not possible. Sitting here with Val and Gina from uh, the Northeast, from Pennsylvania. Thank you both so much for being here and, and coming on this, this, this quick video. Thank you. Thanks, John. Now you've um, this is this should be really short. You you have a number of deals under your belt. You have a couple dozen deals under your belt. In all of those transactions, mobile homes inside of parks, what has been your experience, Valentina, about investing out of your state, investing out of your area? I know that you two travel. So when you're traveling, are you able to still close deals? Have you had any experiences like that in all of the dealings that you've that you've both done yes we um, we actually had one uh, that was done um, we were in the middle of negotiating uh, for a home here in Pennsylvania um, and then we went to Delaware where we were kind of on a little mini vacation um, so we didn't close the deal before we went there so uh, we're there, and uh, the park manager, she's um, really uh, pushing to try to get this sale under her belt because it was the end of the quarter. So um, she was uh, she wanted to come to Delaware to get us to sign the papers. However, her boss wouldn't let her. <laughs> so uh, we uh, just um, she sent me, and I always. We always travel with our laptop, and mm -hmm. so checking, you know, business and everything. So, uh, we, she, she sent me the paperwork. Um, I was able to download it onto a flash drive, and then use a friend's uh, computer and printer to print it out, sign it, scan it back, and get the deal done for both of us um, at that time and uh, in time for her. And we got, uh, the deal was a really great, great deal. Um, it was actually a home that the park was, that the park gave us uh, for nothing and also gave us six months free lot rent. <laughs> it's hard to pass up those ones. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so that's, that's why we were, we, on our end, we were very uh, ready and, and, and to, to take the deal. Um, and, and willing to try to figure out how we were going to do it from a three hour distance away. But yeah, that's if she, she um, uh, if she did not sell the home by the end of the month, was there a plan, a plan B or was there someone else that she was going to sell that to? It was gone one way or the other. No. Yeah, it was, it was gone one. Well, it was only us that they were willing to sell it to because it was a home that needed a total rehab and, since they know us so well and they know our work, they, you know, were only willing to sell it to us knowing that we would fix it and, and be able to get somebody in there. Um, and uh, if it, if we weren't going to buy it, then they were just going to take it out of the park, rip it out, you know, wow. rip it out of the park and, and remove it. Because it, it really, it, it's a total rehab home and we're, we're still working on it. We're almost finished with it, so... Um, what what percentage of your properties are when you first get them total rehab type homes? Zero <laughs> percent. <laughs> this this one was uh, this one was the very first one. Uh, we debated over doing it because it was a total rehab, um, and we don't normally do that. But we wanted to give it a try, see how it went. And it was it was a good deal. I mean, they were giving it to us, and they gave us time to to fix it. So, with that home, um, so you you knew the park manager already. You mm -hmm. looked at the home while you were in Pennsylvania. You yes. maybe talked about the price, or maybe you didn't talk about the price. But then, really, the only thing that you did from Delaware was sign those papers and then get them back to her. Right. Fax right. them back right. to her. Okay. Do you think you could have 
continue if you were let's say you had to stay in Delaware for a couple more months how difficult would it be to continue the job from that far away well it's it because I have built a team of people here in Pennsylvania it would not be difficult for me to do it from there nice now <laughs> you know the opposite is what I'm what I'm kind of dealing with now what we're kind of dealing with now too is that we want to start in Delaware so from here <laughs> um, even though we have friends in Delaware who can kind of help us along a little bit there we don't have a team of you know construction people or anything like that to work on the home um, while like while we're not there so uh, it, it takes I think that it can be done. However, it does take um, a team of people for you to get a team of people in place. But then also, uh, you need you do need to go there. Um, you don't necessarily. I don't believe that you necessarily need to stay there the whole time. But you will have to make trips there to to see what's going on. And yeah. Agreed. I hope hearing what Val and Gina did was helpful. They were in a completely different state and they were able to close with the paperwork and then send it uh, to go ahead and, and finish the kind of the, 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 the closing process, that kind of one step. Um, so I hope that that made sense. And I want to make a point that I uh, kind of asked this question uh, to the group of people that I, that I work with and I only got a few responses back because of the fact that this is difficult. Investing in, diff in states when you're not there is difficult. And here's a response um, from Bill talking that he was able to close on a mobile home from far away, uh, but he could only do so much because he was not physically in the area. And I've done a, a different video um, from a couple, uh, from a brother and sister couple that I, I just uh, are wonderful, uh, very active, uh, doing great things in the New York City area. Uh, you can watch that video, uh, but you're going to see that they're investing, you know, within about a 90 mile kind of two hour radius because it's, again, very tough to kind of do things um, with the trust of another person or from somewhere so far away. Now, speaking of that, uh, we're going to jump to a video with Carlos, who's a very active mobile home investor, uh, but he was actually across the other side, uh, excuse me, of the country uh, when he went ahead and did a deal. So we're going to jump to that video and you'll hear about just what he did. Right now we're talking to Carlos. Carlos, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Excellent. You may recognize Carlos from a previous video that we did. Uh, Carlos, I want to talk to you right now real quick about a recent deal that you did um, about investing while you were outside of the country. Can you talk about that deal, how it came about, what you had to do uh, you know, physically or you couldn't do physically or what you had to outsource or and then selling it and kind of what came of that deal? That'd be that'd be great. Sure. Um, it was uh, 1985, three bedrooms, two bath, double wide. I bought it literally um, a day before I had to travel overseas. Okay. So what I did, I bought the home. Um, went to Walmart, got a lockbox, put the keys in, swept the home real quick. Next day, I was out. Um, <laughs> once, once I reached Thailand, I um, I put it on, I put it on Craigslist, but I used my uh, my Google Voice because I knew that it, I, I cannot get any calls or anything. So my Google Voice and my Craigslist, I make sure that I put text only. That way I started sorting out all kind of different buyers that they were calling me. So um, they, they were texting me. And then I, I was asking for the IDs. They would send it over or they would take pictures through text. I would give them the um, the pass, the, 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 the pass uh, to get inside their home. They would do walkthroughs. And I think within the fourth person, he actually liked the home. I uh, applied at the park, got approved. This whole time I've been in Thailand. <laughs> and um, I told them, if you really, really want the home, um, deposit $500 into my account. And, and once I get back home, uh, we, we can close the deal. And, and he did. He deposited $500 into the account. Uh, um, when I came back home, that, that I bought the home in July 5th. On 8, 8, 8 it was already sold. I had um, the five hundred dollars plus twenty five hundred dollars in the lot rent. So less than less than a month later. Less than a month later, I bought the home for um three thousand dollars, and I got um three thousand five hundred dollars included in the lot rent. Excellent. 
Right on. Now that one you sold was that a quick? You sold that one for cash, or you sold? I, that no, one? I sold it on payments. Okay. Um, so I sold it for fifteen thousand, and getting four hundred dollars cash flow on the property. Wonderful. So and um, yeah, it was. It, it's it's this business actually works anywhere. You know, um, I definitely recommend people that you trust so they can do the paperwork while you're overseas and do the closing or. But this this business definitely work a anywhere that you're traveling or on vacation or whatever you're doing. Well, so you now when so you purchased the home, but you were you were physically here. I mean, you looked at the home prior to buying it. You, yes. You closed. You swept it. You put the lockbox on it. Yes. And then when you're selling it, you got the you marketed the property. You talked to you texted all the potential people. You mm -hmm. gave them the lockbox code. You you weren't working with any property manager, any other partners on this on this deal. No. And, and when they went through, they liked the home. They went to the park. They filled out the application. Now, did you sell? Did you actually close on the home and sign paperwork with them? Did you have somebody else do that before I, you I, got I actually, back? I actually did it when I came back. Um, okay. Yeah, because yeah. because they paid the five hundred as a. They paid for the five hundred. Yeah. Okay. Uh, awesome. uh, Call or something for their home. Yeah. Perfect. Now, in uh, now with your experience, is there? Could this be if you, if you couldn't have gotten back, say you had to stay over in Thailand for some for some reason, and you and you and you had to close? Do you have somebody there that you could have, you know, that you would have trusted to have this paperwork close, or what would you have done? Let's say if you just could not get back, and you and you had this buyer lined up. Uh, great question. Um, definitely um, have somebody that you trust, somebody that understands all the paperwork. Um, once again, you, you can talk to the person over the phone. You can tell them exactly which paper needs to be notarized, that the buyer is, is going to deposit the money into your account. So that person most li likely just going to be doing the paperwork. Right. And right. definitely have somebody that you can trust and, and do it there for you. But yeah, it right. would definitely will work. Now this 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 home was in your local area anyway. So once once you got back, your you were you went right there. Yes, 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 yes. He was actually waiting for me. The the, the guy and um, we did the deal that day, and um, he he already remodeled the whole property. <laughs> He's been done so many things to the home already. Oh, that's beautiful. He's only, only been there for thirty days, <laughs> and he changed the floor, walls, stove. So good yeah. for him. Excellent. Very, very, very good tenant buyer. You've got a great tenant buyer in there, it sounds yes. like. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much for coming on and being here with us. And thank you so much for, I mean, just opening up your business and, you know, sharing the deals that, you, that, you, that, you're, that you're doing. Sure. Thank you. Have you been noticing a pattern with Carlos and also with Val and Gina? We're going to talk about that and kind of articulate exactly, uh, kind of condense all of this video down into like one or two sentences here at the very end of the video. Uh, but right now, I want to talk about the steps from one to nine and then a couple other things, again, about what's possible to outsource, what's not possible to outsource, and just kind of run down to put you in the shoes of what you're going to be doing when you're investing in mobile homes abroad um, or just in a different area. So let's talk about this logically. So finding leads. Now, uh, let's, okay, let's pretend now that uh, you're in, uh, by the way, I moved the, uh, the four macro things down to here. Uh, we're going to be talking about this for a minute, but let's talk about and pretend that you want to invest somewhere like three to five hours away and you're going to be purchasing the home. Uh, it's in a park uh, or it can be on land as well. Um, so let's kind of go off of that thinking right now. So uh, you're finding leads. So you're on your home base and you're finding leads for some place, you know, five, six hours away or maybe even more or maybe less, but you're finding leads, you know, hours and hours away. So how do you do that? You have the same technology as many other people. You have the internet. You can go on sites like Craigslist and Facebook and Backpage.com and Zillow and a number of other sites that feature mobile homes for sale. Uh, so you can you can outsource leads uh, by using technology. You can also have people go to the local area and you know have boots on the ground. You can train people, local college kids, your family members, to drive around communities, to find for sale by owners, to do other types of marketing that would need you physically there. They need somebody to contribute to this marketing, this advertising, uh, because it's in the field. 
or um, actually kind of finding leads, uh, knocking on doors, going to parks, meeting managers, owners. Now, that's a kind of a touchy subject because that should really be you. I mean, you're the one building a name and a reputation, and to trust somebody else with talking to managers or owners uh, or other realtors or other investors on your behalf can be kind of dangerous. So with regards to finding leads, I'm gonna say for time-wise, about 70% of the time finding leads can be outsourced but from experience it's that 30 percent when you're face to face with with owners with park owners with sellers with realtors with other investors that don't invest in mobile homes being that that other 30 percent that actually networking and being there in that face to face time that's where a lot of our deals take place so time wise 70 percent can be outsourced like 70 percent of the total marketing you know, if we're looking at total marketing, but that 30% where it's you, you know, and they can feel your passion and how genuine you are and what your goals truly are and how you can help and not help, um, that is huge. And that's where a lot of our deals come from. They're not usually advertised on Craigslist or online. Um, so I hope that that kind of made sense. Uh, so this can, can be um, outsourced somewhat. That's what that term will mean, OS. So that can be outsourced somewhat. Let's go down to now calling sellers, setting appointments, uh, going to those appointments, and then making offers. I'm gonna kind of include that all in one. So calling sellers, you absolutely can call sellers once you find them, let's say, on, on, on Craigslist. You can call the sellers, you can build some rapport over the phone, then you can go to the appointments if you set an appointment, or you can train somebody. Now, I'm in Texas uh, some of the time, and I'm also in Kansas where I have a park, and to fill up that park, sometimes I, I've trained my mover, my mobile home mover, to go to homes that I tell them to go to and take pictures, take video, and look for certain things. I've trained this person that I trust, and when I'm not there, uh, I tell Whitney to go ahead and, and look at homes and um, do what he needs to do to get me the information so I can make a decision of what offers I want to make. And then I call up the sellers and I can make those offers over the phone. So from experience, you can outsource calling sellers, this should not be outsourced going to the appointments. Uh, it can be, so I mean, it definitely can be, but long-term wise, you need to have somebody that's vested in your, in your deal, or I'm paying Whitney to go ahead and do this and also to move the home. So he definitely has a vested interest in, you know, showing me what's the deal and I want to work with him moving forward. So, you know, he better do a good job, so to speak. So, but then the making offers, that can be done um, over the phone. I will say even with, you know, FaceTime uh, on the iPhone or Skype, you know, when we can talk through technology, through the computer, it does, it's not the same as being there in person. Some of our sellers don't even have that kind of technology. So, um, especially if you're gonna make an offer to a seller on payments, where you're making payments to the seller, or maybe you're just buying the home cash, but being there and them seeing you or them seeing a representative of your company is going to be huge and crucial. So this doesn't have to be you going to the appointment. It should be you making the calls because you're going to make them best. You're going to have the, you know, you're going to care most about your business um, unless you're working with a vested interest partner, you know, you're splitting things 50-50 and then the offers you can make via phone as well. So we can outsource this again somewhat. Uh, in my opinion. Due diligence is everything from when there's a purchase and sale agreement, either verbal or written, all the way up to the point where you close with a seller. That's the due diligence process. Now for me, I like to micromanage things sometimes. I'll fully admit that. So I like to touch things and walk through things and see things with my eyes. I mean, sometime before closing, I mean, I want to know what I'm buying, I want to taste, you know, not taste it, I want to smell it and, and be there and look through it myself at least once, I mean, to know what you're buying. And you can call up the state, you can call up the park, uh, you can call up um, uh, the government agencies to ask them certain questions about the home, um, about the seller, about the taxes, about any hidden liens or non-hidden liens, or about procedures moving forward. So a lot of this you can do by phone. You don't actually have to go to the property, but in my opinion, you know, seeing the home at least once, you're buying this, this asset. Uh, probably not too, too much money, but you are still buying it and you want to make sure that you know just what you're buying. You want to go through the area. If you've never been to this area, I mean, is it a good area? Is it a bad area? A war zone? Uh, anywhere in between? You know, something that I didn't mention. So due diligence, uh, outsourced somewhat. You know, you can completely outsource this if your trust level is just through the roof. Or maybe you're working with a family member, maybe. Or then family members are some of the worst partners to have. 
Um, funding. Let's talk about funding right now. This one can actually be outsourced. I mean, let's think about it. You can, there's a dozen or more ways to transfer money, whether you know, you're, you're transferring it to a friend, you're transferring it to an owner. But, uh, so the funding can be outsourced. Sometimes maybe if you're local to maybe a credit union, if you're going to use a credit union for some reason, or you're an end buyer, you're, you're watching this video, uh, you might have to actually be there at the bank once or twice prior to you know, getting this loan. Closing, closing can be at the subject property, it can be at an escrow office, a title company, depending if this property is in a park, if it's on land, which state that you're in, all kind of varies with regards to closing. A lot of the paperwork, and you heard with Carlos and Valangina, they were able to close from afar. Now, before you close, I encourage you to walk through the property one last time, and if you're not there, you should have somebody that you trust. Uh, maybe maybe you're buying this from the park and you kind of trust them more than you would an owner occupant um, who is selling the home to you but closing you can sign paperwork from afar but i do highly highly suggest suggest that when before you buy a home you do walk through it one last time also with closing uh the um after you purchase the home, the uh, state or the manufactured home titling division in your state uh, is most likely going to want the buyer, whether that's you or your representative of your company or your trustee, that is going to be uh, present at the time when the title transfers. Not necessarily the closing with the seller, but when the title transfers from the seller's ownership over to your control. So closing can be outsourced somewhat when you're purchasing. Repairs, most people that I work with, they're gonna outsource repairs anyway. Some people are gonna do basic repairs themselves, but most of the time repairs are outsourced. I can tell you from personal experience, I've been burned a number of times, and I was right there watching these handymen and contractors screw, screw me over, and I didn't even know what they were doing at the time. So to be five hours away or 10 hours away, and I also got screwed over being 10 hours away, but. Uh, even if you're close, you're, you know, you can get taken advantage of. So you can do everything else correctly. And I've said this before, but if you hire the wrong people or you overpay or you over improve a mobile home, that's, that can be a, a detriment to the entire deal. I mean, it can kill the entire deal and you have a bad taste in your mouth because some people screwed you, the contractors are handyman, or you didn't know what you should repair because of the market, because of the area and because of the park or because your exit strategy wasn't valid. So repairs, uh, you can definitely outsource this, but somewhat. You want daily recaps of what's going on. You want pictures and videos. You want all your paperwork to be on point to protect you and to protect your contractor and your home and everything moving forward. It's great when everything's going great, but when things don't go great, that's when there's problems. So finding buyers and approval. So finding buyers uh, can absolutely be outsourced somewhat because some of the activities we do to find buyers require you with regards to advertising to be local, but you can outsource that uh, with for far as advertising. So somebody has to be local for some of our advertising for mobile homes. But let's talk about when the buyers actually see your advertising on Craigslist, in the newspaper, online. They're gonna call, hey, I wanna find out more about this home for sale or this home for rent. So are you selling on payments? Are you selling with cash? Are you renting the home? Is it in a park? Is it on land? Do the sellers call you? Do they go to a YouTube video and watch a tour of the home? Or do they call an automated message where they hear a description of the home and what to do moving forward? And then they go to the home and they, they get approved at the park or they walk through the home after they quickly talk to you. You can give them the lockbox code for the door. You don't even have to be there. Or maybe you give the key to the neighbor and they help. Or maybe you are there to actually show the home and you're having a, you know, a Saturday uh, uh, open house. That's a possibility as well. So finding buyers, do you have to be there uh, from personal experience? Absolutely not uh, to pre-screen them. To approve them, you can do, uh, there's plenty of online um, background tenant screening companies. There's also ones local to your local area, wherever you're watching this video. Um, and then your mortgage loan originator can help you here as well. The park manager will help you approve the tenant if it's in a uh, mobile home park as well. So finding buyers, that can be outsourced. When you talk to, um, and speaking in personally in my business and some of the, and the, and the folks I work with, we're not typically talking to buyers. We're not meeting them face to face uh, until we actually go to sell the home. And that brings us to the closing. When we're at the closing table, uh, in an escrow office, a title office, at the subject property. 
uh, when we're closing the home, we can absolutely outsource this. However, it's my strong encouragement, and I'm going to say outsource somewhat, because during closing, that is your time to, and I really want to, I really want to kind of stress this, so I'll take this moment to say that this is important. At the closing, it's your opportunity to flex your authority muscle. You're building a relationship. If you're selling on payments or, selling or, or renting the home, you're starting a relationship for the next five years, 10 years, or longer with this buyer. You need to establish clear rules, and your goal at that signing is not to be their friend. It's not to be rude or nice or mean or, or anything. It's to get all of what you have to say across to that tenant buyer or to that buyer or to that seller. And if they don't like what you have to say, that's their opportunity to leave. So this is a point where the, where the tenant buyer can leave because they see how firm and fair you are. And if they're going to take advantage of you or there's somebody that knows that they're going to get in here and not pay or they're going to cause a problem, they can leave right at this closing because of the authority that you're exerting and the, the image you want to get across um, is that if something happens, you've been here before, you've done this a thousand times before, and there's a procedure, you know, if they pay, that's great. And if obviously the buyer does not pay, then we're fully prepared to move forward. Um, and again, this is a very, it's a, you know, we, this is like an entire you know, two hour video in and of itself. So me just talking to you and saying a few words on it. Um, I hope that that really makes sense. Uh, we're not going to go too deep into that, but that's why I say somewhat outsourcing for the closing because really, really hire, uh, encourage you to be there or someone that you've trained to say just what you want and get that point across where, you know, wow, that, that manager is tough but fair. Like I know not to, you know, if I'm not going to pay someone, like it's, it's going to, it's not going to be them. Like I don't want them kind of coming after me or, or doing what they have to do. They're very, you know, they, they know what's, what's, what's going on. So I don't want people taking advantage of you. Bottom line, hope that made sense. Management, if it's in a park, the park manager does a lot of the management. You can also have management companies uh, or you can manage the park, manage it yourself. You can take phone calls. You know, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna be late on my payment this month or um, I have to leave or whatever it might be or I don't wanna pay. Again, you know, depending on who you put in the home, you can set yourself up for failure or success. So finding, you know, the right people to put in your home. Again, you can do everything right but if you sell to the wrong person on payments or renting, you're going to have a terrible taste in your mouth from first experience, I can tell you, and headaches and all that. But a good person in there is a dream. You're going to forget who they are. They're going to pay on time and pay up front and uh, do all the repairs that they're supposed to and love their home and love their neighbors. Uh, management, um, the biggest thing to, to, with regards to management goes is someone with boots on the ground, to knock on the door if needed, to put a notice on the door if needed, to start some court proceedings if needed. Again, that's not something we ever shoot for in your entire career. You should hopefully have never, uh, never not one eviction. Um, but management, this can be outsourced for sure. Um, and I'm not even going to put somewhat because that, that can absolutely be outsourced. And I would say you can do a lot of it by phone as well. Uh, right here is what I wanted to mention is just kind of these turnkey companies. Uh, I don't know how many do mobile homes or manufactured homes. But let's go back and talk to, and I'm going to incorporate some of this into here. But let's talk about this real quick from before. You have $2,000 to start. Let's say you have $20,000 or $200,000. And you say, John, I don't have any time. I just have all this money. So you can just throw money at things. Give it to a turnkey company. And do you trust them? Do they have the time? Probably. Do they have the knowledge? Maybe. Do they have the you know face-to-face -face time? They're actually physically there. They can do it, yes. So you have the money and you're giving up all of this control because you trust this turnkey company to do everything for you. They buy the home, they manage it. Like that's their company. They're gonna do this for someone. You know, will it be you? Maybe, will it not be you? Who knows? But again, I don't know how many turnkey companies there are out there, but if you are considering that, just do your due diligence. Um, if you don't have uh, any money, but you do have a lot of time, you're going to need a lot of time, or not a lot, but more than 25 hours. Because if you don't have any money, then you're going to have to up your time and up, up your knowledge about how to use other people's money, how to structure creative deals when you purchase, and then also just have more time to go outside your investing radius uh, so that you can find more homes, so that you can really shake that tree and not just find homes that are for sale on Craigslist, 
where everyone else is looking, but find the homes that no one else is finding that are for sale for motivated sellers and people that need help. Um, and uh, so I hope that this made sense. I think that's all I wanted to cover right there. Um, I hope that all of this made sense. If I can really articulate you know, all of this whole video now that we, we covered everything, um, to my kind of true opinion, uh, you know, again, boiled down to like one or two sentences of if mobile home investing abroad or out of state is realistic, uh, it's really not that realistic unless you have someone with boots on the ground. It's very difficult. It can be realistic. I'll, I'll take that back, but it's going to be very difficult and you're going to give up a lot of the control you have because a lot of what this takes is actually being present and going out and doing extra work. But if your hands are tied because you physically can't get there, you can only do so much over the phone, through the internet, with the help of others. And there's people that you know, probably will do things for money in your area, but it certainly slows things down. So if at all possible, try investing within 90 minutes of yourself. It's gonna be much, much easier. If you can get further to that area, or if you can fly maybe, you know, if you can go to a place four to six times a month, you're gonna have a very, that's going to be enough. It won't be very, you know, it won't be tremendously easy, but you'll that'll be enough to handle all of this. So four to six times, if you're flying to an area from your home investing area for business, or I don't know why you would fly that much comfortably, but you know, if you were, that could be doable. But investing somewhere far, it is very difficult unless you have someone uh, that you trust. They're a brother, and they're doing most of the work. A brother, a sister, family member, friend. They're doing most of the work. You've trained them. Uh, if you're like the only proactive, hardworking one of the group, that is not going to work. You're going to spin your wheels. You're going to get frustrated. And if you have the money, you're the one investing. That's a very risky, dangerous situation for you. If you Thanks so much for watching. I really hope that that made sense to you right now. If you have any questions, please comment them below. If you like this video, if this was helpful, uh, please share it uh, with your friends. Thank you so much uh, for watching this. And if you ever need to reach me, uh, you can reach me at john uh, at mobilehomeinvesting.net. I uh, thank you for helping me make this video. Do you have anything to say? Um, in the sunrise, it's mint. I like mint. The, the sunrise is beautiful? Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. If you can use some exotic booze, there's a bar. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know you were a hunter. You know, I never, uh, let me. <laughs>I went to Target and I hunted for this good value here. This is this is wicker. I don't know if you can see.